Hey everyone, this is the next video in the series about unit testing in Java. So far in previous two videos, I have covered about introduction about JUnit 5, why it is called Jupyter and also we have seen the environment setup and we have written the first unit test. This video is the continuation of that one. Uh, right, so this video we are going to talk about the test classes, life cycle methods and test methods, right. So let's go ahead and get started. So first see what are the test classes? Any class that contains at least one test method. This is important. So under test report, test package, test project structure, you write classes inside those. If that class contains at least one test method, then that class is known as test class, right. And test class uh, must not be abstract. So these are the some features that test classes must follow and they must have a single construct. So it is the uh, property that they must follow so that JUnit framework that we are using can pick those classes and con uh, consider those classes as test classes and generate the report and do other stuff that it needed to do, right? So this is the property of the test classes that it should follow always, right? So whenever you create a class, it must not be abstract and it must have a single constructor only, right? And then test methods, test methods, any instance method that is directly annotated or meta annotated with all of these annotations at the rate test, at the rate repeated test, at the rate parameterized test and test factory or test template. So these are the annotations, important annotations. When you write tests, you are uh, going to do the testing inside a particular instance method, right? And those instance method are annotated with if any of these annotations, those methods are known as test methods, right? Because they are actually performing the tests. That is why it's a logical name test method. Uh, we call those test methods. Uh, next, coming to life cycle methods. These are the special kind of methods uh, that are known as life cycle method. We will see in a while why they are called life cycle methods, right? So any method that is directly annotated or meta annotated with all of this with any of this before all, after all, before each or after each. In your class, if you see any method that is annotated with any of this before all, after all, before each, after each, that method is a life cycle method. Let me explain you why they are called life cycle method, right? So uh, in the previous slide, I have explained you about that at the rate test method, right? So you are performing some tests and there are some uh, parameters uh, that are in picture here. They are performing some uh, tests and the attributes, uh, the entities that are performing tests, they need life, right? So they need to be set with some initial parameters. They need to be instantiated. They need to be mocked or not, right? So all of those are given in life cycle method, right? So when any method that is annotated with before each, inside before each, we are going to do the initialization part. We are going to give life to the parameters that are going to play, that are going to perform test inside test method, right? And after testing is performed, uh, those, those entities, those uh, things that are performing test has to be destroyed, has to be added. Right. And all of those is happening inside after each. Right. So in a single class, you have multiple tests. Right. And in each test, you need some instantiation. You need some initialization. Those initialization part is happening in before each and destruction part, destroy part is happening in after each, after each unit test, after each method after each test perform, right? And before all, after all, it is self-explanatory. In a single class, before executing all of this test method, these are the one-time execution, after all and before all. Before all is going to perform initialization only once per class, and after all is going to perform the tear down destruction only once per class. These depends on the requirement that we are performing the tests, right? So we will see the use cases in plenty of the use cases in the future videos, right? Few points to note about these test classes and test methods, right? So test methods and lifecycle methods must not be abstract and they must not return a value. So Test classes, test methods and lifecycle methods are not required to be public, uh, but they must not be private. So 
apart from private access modifier they can take any modifier public protected or default so this is about the properties of the test classes test methods and life cycle method let me take you to the project and show you all of this in quick demo so all of the annotation that i have just shown you let me just quickly cover that in a short demo right so let me go ahead and create a class standard test and just naming it i'm going to write few methods here right so i already have written few things right so i'm just going to explain this so i have to import all of this right so before all i need to import this i do not need this and at the end I need to import all of all of this, right? And this. So all of these annotations are coming from the this org uh, Jupyter API dot star, right? So what it is doing before all is the is part of the life cycle methods. Before each also is a life cycle test. Here in succeeding test, you are going to perform few tests, right? And failing test, this fail uh, method call is going to fail the test. There are some requirements that you deliberately want to fail a particular test. This is the thing that you should use for that. You want to disable particular test when you have hundreds of tests, multiple tests. Uh, at some point of time, you want to disable some test. You can disable that using these annotations, right? And at that, you want to abort some test. You can use this uh, assume true and fail annotation together, right? So, and then after each and after all, this is again the life cycle method, right? So let me add, uh, let me give some things here, some uh, print statement here so that we can see. So before giving that, let me just quickly run this one and show you this, uh, the report and all other things that how it is showing. So here it is initializing test. So we have here uh, multiple tests. So first test is the succeeding test here, right? So it is doing things and failing test. We have deliberately failed it. So that is why it is failing. Skip test. We have disabled it. That is why it is uh, it is uh, not executed properly. So anything written here is not going to execute, right? So this is the disable and main purpose of the disable annotation, right? And aborted test. So it is assume true, assume false, whatever you write here, if it is false, uh, whatever you have written, so it is going to abort that test, right? It is not going to execute whatever uh, after that, right? So this is how the tests are going, right? So, but still we are not able to see after reach, after all, and this before all things. So let me put some things here. Let me print some. Let me put some logging just here and show you how it is going to execute. So before all, and this thing I'm going to put here before it so after adding this you will be able to differentiate things right so why they are so after each right and then again this is after so in the life cycle methods i have uh, added the print statements right so let me trigger this again So test results you can see before all is coming here and if I control C and control F only one match is here right so only once it is coming here right and before each after each is here before each after each is here right and again we have for before each after each and then we have after all right so you see before each after each is coming as many tests you have right so i'm not talking about the disabled one so whatever you have disabled in no life cycle methods are going to get executed for that but apart from that for each unit test each test annotation that you have before each and after each is going to get executed right so construction and destruction is going to happen accordingly at class level at method level right so this is the purpose of the life cycle method so
for the next videos i have prepared some source code here calculator this is quick uh, this is very simple and easy to understand for understanding purposes i have created add subtract and added some validation around this i'm going to explain this in the next video i'm going to write the uh, test uh, around this one right so then we will use all of this methods that are there in the equation class and we will see the result out of this whether it is correct or not right so all of this i am going to explain in the next video so all the other videos previous and next video entire playlist i have given in the description box this video go ahead and check out that i will see you in the next video with the next topic take care bye bye